It wouldn't surprise me to get another bite somewhere right here without moving the boat. Wouldn't surprise me at all. He didn't get it, it was a little one. I knew there was a little one after it, but we got him that second go around. He kind of swirled on it once and then come back. You know, it's funny, there's something, something going on right here on the bank I want to show you, kind of point out, which is, I think, why those fish are there. It's a chunky little dude. Look how dark, pretty. So if you look on the bank right in there, you got these reeds, whatever you want to call them. But right in front of that, where both those bites have come from, there's a little path. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's a beaver trail. That's kind of what it looks like to me. And when a beaver goes up and down on the bank like that, when they come in the water, they cut a groove, okay? They cut a groove in the bottom. And anytime you've got that, it's gonna have a little depression. So right in line with that, that's two bites I've had two bites on that cast, like buy a, a cast or two before. But look for those little differences like that because a little subtle difference in the bottom, three or four inches is gonna make a big difference for those fish in a place you're liable to catch some. Three frog bites and what, 10 minutes of fishing? This could be a pretty fun day. There's something to get on my frog. Yep. They hit the water and that fish come off of the reeds. I mean, that fish was in no water at all. I never even twitched it. When it landed, I saw that fish make a wake coming towards it and I never ever twitched the rod. I just let it sit there and he come up and grabbed it. Dude, that was so cool. That's a chunk there. That was really, really cool. Just to, just to watch that fish come out of no water at all come up and grab it. Let's get that one unhooked, get back in there. That fish was, I'd like to know just how shallow it is up there truthfully. It can't be, it can't be very deep at all. Sweet. When you get in an area and get, start getting a couple bites on a frog, it's good to, <clears throat> good to put your talons down and really just pick it apart because so often there's gonna be, you know, multiple fish in a, in a little small area, so. It's one of those kind of deals, once you find them, you really want to want to pick them apart. And I love love using my Mega Live when you're in this heavy grass. It's really, it's so good for seeing those fish way out there under those mats with a frog. <laughs> <laughs> this next little pocket up right up there, that's got, I mean, that's got to be one in that. That's a pike. I did, I did not look, see it. I just, the way it sounded, that's what it had to be. That right there is perfect how it's just a nice little confined space of it. That, that could be the bottom. Oh, shoot. I don't know why I didn't get him. Maybe they ain't all along the bank. Surely in that duckweed up around that beaver hut will be one. I mean, that's got all the right ingredients. Yep. If there was anywhere there should have been one, that is the spot, there's no doubt about it. A beaver hut with some duckweed blown up in a corner. That's kind of got all the ingredients going on right there. Not a giant, but dude, that is so much fun. So, so much fun. Pin him on there good. That's the Retro Gill Color Terminator Poppin' Frog. It's a, it's a great bluegill imitator. Um, you know, looks a lot like a sunfish of, of any kind. Got a little bit of orange on the belly, orange mouth, kind of a green back, pumpkin sides. Just a fantastic bluegill imitator. Let's see if he's got a big buddy, big cousin in there. 
beaver huts on lakes that have them, rivers or whatever you're fishing, can be a dynamite for bass for a lot of reasons, truthfully. I mean, if you look at look at what you've got there, you know, it's really important to understand what's going on under the water. Um, those, those beavers, they use different trails and they use the same ones. They're not just gonna go out random directions. There's multiple trails always in and out, especially of a hut that's that size. The deal with those trails though, they keep a clean place. And a lot of places that are gonna have beaver huts are places that have a lot of vegetation. So having those clean trails going in and out of that vegetation, that makes edges that largemouth especially are gonna use in and around those. So there's always a little depression, you know, coming out around that hut and actually right up against the hut itself. It's typically deeper water where they go down and go up into that hut than it is out away from it. So it may be really shallow like it is here getting to it, but just know that right against that hut is a little bit deeper water. And a lot of times those bass will kind of hunker up under that. Think of it like an undercut bank. That's where they're gonna sit a lot of times. So if I see a beaver hut, you can bet I'm gonna be over there fishing around it. Yeah. There we go. That's a decent one. Yeah. That was a pretty sweet bite. Just kind of come through that duck weed and sucked it under. I've fished quite a while through some of this really, really pretty stuff and hadn't, hadn't done anything. Uh, finally got us another one. It's really important, you know, a big thing with fishing a frog, whether you're in this kind of stuff or open water or anything, is just, man, give them a second on that hook set because that's a good thing with a you know, soft bodied frog, they're gonna hold on to it pretty good. Um, it's not something you have to be in a great big rush to set the hook with. It's it's not easy to do, but allowing yourself to, allowing that fish to <clears throat> pull you down, give it a second, get the line tight and, you know, set, plant your feet and set the hook right is a, is a big part of that and making sure that you're gonna get most of those fish in the boat. So don't wait a hurry if you can help it. Um, you don't have to, you know, those fish are gonna hold on to it. I'm about to get a bite. You get it? Yep. <laughs> it wasn't a very big one, but he it hit the water and he kind of moved, got a little closer. I twitched it, he moved, got a little closer. And I twitched it and he came over and just barely pulled it under. Trying to get some of the grass off of him. Just a little dude, but. He still came through there and got it. That was neat to watch him. It was like playing cat and mouse. You knew he was getting closer, inching closer, inching closer. He finally come over and slurped it. Oh, okay. There was an actual frog hopping across the grass in there. I don't think it was the right color though. That's why it didn't get eaten. It wasn't retro gill. It was like, it was live bullfrog. I think one move, yeah, get ready. Oh, he's under it. Dude, the water like, I mean, humped up. I don't know if that was the same fish. I felt like the first one was bigger, but it could have been the same one. Flying bass. I definitely felt like the first one that rolled out, it was bigger. That's a bass. That fish was just out on the, <clears throat> out on the edge of this little, little stringy stuff. Whatever this stuff is. One of the first ones I've caught that wasn't actually up in the duckweed. Duckweed has definitely been the better cover today as I would kind of expect you know this this stuff here it's not bad cover but it's certainly not the kind of full full mat full shade you know like the duckweed really is this stuff is a little more a little more open a little more stringy not necessarily any easier to fish but if you can find some of it where it's a little bit more wadded up those little subtle differences within any type of vegetation is, is where those fish are gonna hold most of the time, especially on a bright sunny day. Place where you've got just a little bit more shade, you know, than the next, the next one beside of it's gonna be, gonna be what's best.
Man, I hope uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun out here. We didn't catch a lot of big ones, but uh, but anytime you're catching them on a frog, just watching that bite is a is a ball in my opinion. Um, Terminator popping frog is what I threw all day. That's the retro gill color. Like I said, one of like four or five new colors we came out with in the popping frog, walking frog, and walking frog junior this year. But my frog set up same deal. I always throw it on. It's a Johnny Morse carbon light seven three medium heavy action rod carbon light reel seven five to one gear ratio and then 50 pound braided line on there um that's just a great setup i like that medium kind of what i would call a medium speed reel um not as slow as what i crank with not as fast as what i flip with but that seven five to one is a good ratio because you still have enough power to winch those fish out of that grass but also bring the bait back in pretty quick to make that next cast so seven three medium heavy is a long enough rod to reach out there and get them and uh and you know be able to drive the hooky and it was it was it was a really fun day you know had a had some pretty cool blow-ups and it was fun watching them under that duckweed sometimes the bait would hit the water and then you'd actually see the fish start moving to it so it's a pretty exciting way to catch them hope y'all like this video be sure to like subscribe we'll catch you on the next one